either. You either contact your carrier um, and find out um, if you really do need an upgrade. Um, and then, of course, um, do some research in terms of what kind of flip phones that are out there. You don't have to do too much research. I'll give you a little feedback. Um, there's a phone called the uh, Verizon sells it. It's called the uh, All Flip, All Patel Go Flip, and it is um, it's probably the phone with the, the flip phone with the most accessibility options, um, and it's under a hundred dollars. So it's not a horrible, horrible um, change, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so those those particular uh, phone, that particular phone is a 4G phone, so it's it's not a 5G. Uh, but what's nice is it does allow uh, for you to use it as a hotspot. So you can use it as like an internet connection so that you can access an iPad, something like that. So these are the types of things that, that we need can to I interrupt for one second? Can I just see for one second, please? Does that mean that we have a higher number iPhone that we're going to be able to be on 5G? It'll just automatically go to 5G or not, you know? Can you repeat your question? I'm sorry. Oh, if okay. we've got a, like a higher number iPhone having to buy. Oh, the iPhones are fine. It's okay. mostly the flip phones. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I can repeat Any, Anything under 5S? Well, uh, iPhones are not, yeah, iPhones are not an issue here. It's mostly the flip phones, mm -hmm. the oh, track okay. phones, things like that. It's the iPhone 5 and the iPhone 5S. Mm -hmm. okay. Those are the, those are the three Gs, but most people are not, as a matter of fact, Mary Ann and I just took ours out the other day. Most people don't even have those phones anymore. Um, but those phones are working on a 3G network. Um, like I said, most of us don't have them because in terms of accessibility, they don't they don't help us. But will the iPhone be up the current iPhone, like I have the iPhone SE, for example, mm -hmm. will that be able to upgrade to 5G or do you have to get like uh, a, no the 5G phones higher... for iPhones are 12 and 13 models. Okay. okay. And but 4G is going to be around for a while, so I wouldn't stress too much about the 5G thing. And right now 5G is still a work in progress, so it still takes a lot of battery power. It's not really used for a lot of things yet. <laughs> what happened with mine? I because I heard I had a track phone, an old track phone, mm -hmm. and I heard that this was happening. So I called track phone, and they said, "Oh yeah, yeah, you're going to have to upgrade." But they sent me a free phone. So like, oh, thank you. <laughs> it was a, it was a <laughs> experience trying to get it activated and stuff, but it, it's working now. Yeah. And, and I can, that's really, that's really valuable information. So I found that the, the company track phone, um, it's actually the, I found that actually the easiest to deal with. Um, you just, go on their website and they they actually had a, a fair amount of phones to choose from um but here's the thing is that was a month ago things are getting short and tight mm -hmm. and hard to find uh and so like yesterday just for giggles just because i wanted to be able to give you guys feedback i i looked around for some um flip phones and they're getting harder and harder to get yeah because and it's because people are having to upgrade uh, and then the whole supply chain issue. So, what are the brands of track phone? Track phone is is a carrier. So they're like Verizon, AT and T. Okay. Um, and and what you do is uh, you purchase the like any other carrier. You purchase your phone, and then you buy minutes to use with that. Carrier. Okay. <clears throat> and you can get this from Verizon. The track phones, um, from what I know, you do it online. Okay. Okay. So oftentimes, like uh, I'm, I'm kind of an Amazon junkie just because it's easy. Uh, okay. So often, I'll just go on Amazon and I'll search for uh, track phone flip phones. Now, what type of phone does this other lady have? What does she have? Does she There's, just said? At the beginning, I had a small. It wasn't even a flip phone. It was, it was like three inches, and it was just. You know, it had the, the buttons and a very small screen, and I just used it 
for phone calls and for some texting because I only used it when I was out of the house or if I went away on vacation or something. I never use it. But I was wondering where you got it and what brand or how do you get some? my husband has a flip, so he's going to be going on to that. So I'm trying to find out what's the best, easiest option for him. He has trouble with iPhone pads. Yeah, well, what would she, like, like I said, they, they, they've now sent me a smartphone, so I'm putting a whole new curve. Here. Okay. But, yeah, but but I, way back when I bought it, I bought it at, at the drugstore. Ooh. Okay. And, and then just bought the minutes, but now I also have the plan where they, they take they take twenty dollars out every three months, and I get another uh, hour of minutes and uh, ninety day service. And okay, I haven't used it so much. I have over a thousand to six hundred minutes, so it's not, I never use it. <laughs> wow. Okay, thank you, Aileen. I believe you can buy them at Walmart and Target. Yep. Thank you. Thank yep. you. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Thank you okay. so much. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Pauline. Yep. I, for I forgot about just the little stores. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's something you can you can go into and you can feel and talk to somebody, you know? Yep. Okay. All right. So so here's the thing is with the flip phones, there are there's not a large variety out there. Um, there's only about a handful of them. So um, like I said, the research I've done is the Alcatel. It's called the Go Flip, and uh, that one seems to have the most accessibility built into it. Um, and it's, like I said, relatively inexpensive. Thank you. I have a question. Are you talking about one that folds? Yes. Yeah. That, that's a stupid thing they did. That I don't know why they they tried that fold. What they're doing now is, and this is it, this is where it gets a little confusing, is um, what's starting to happen now is they're creating flip phones that are smartphones. Oh. So it's important for us to keep this separate. What I'm discussing today are flip phones that actually has a physical keypad. Oh. That's yeah, what, and that's what that I'm looking right. for. Exactly. Good vision. Right. Name. Good vision. Most most of our seniors and many of our visually impaired do much much better with that type of a device. Yes. Okay. Tact, yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, a tactile keypad that yes. you can actually, um, operate and function. Yes. Okay. So and this is so. Um, so what's happened is many of the telephone companies are are trying to shut down their three G towers. So I'm telling you that take. You know, don't don't sit on your laurels on this one. We gotta we gotta jump. You know, because first of all, the supply chain is going down. They're going to be shutting down the three G network, and that simply means that you're not going to be able to make a phone call. Oh my goodness! So if you if you end up in a pickle, you know, and you have your cell phone and think, okay, well, I'm just going to call AAA. No, you're not, because the system went down. So this is one of the reasons why we're we're presenting this to you today, so that. You're educated um, uh, and you have the information that you need to move forward. And always remember, if there's any question that you, you know, you raise after these meetings, you can always call us, email us, you know, whatever works for you. So, you know, don't ever hesitate. All right. So that's one of the really, really big changes um, that's really concerned me um, for us. There are some other changes. So... Are we okay with the phones? Can I go on to talk about some another change? All right. Are, are, yes. Is there a date when they're going to shut off these 3G towers? So AT&T is February, Verizon is December, oh. Sprint is June. Uh, and but here's the thing is is I, I just I just looked that up this morning. All those dates were different a week ago. Oh. <laughs> but I read from the the FCC, Federal, Federal Communication Commission, has stated that it's all of these companies will be doing this before the end of the year. So it's an end of the year thing. And so what's happening now, and uh, Bob and I were having this conversation is, I don't know if you guys have heard it, but airports are getting a little nervous about opening up the 3G. And the reason for that is because there's 
potential security risks with 5G network because it's new. Uh, and you know, there are hackers out there and all this wonderful stuff. So they're really kind of taking their time. Uh, but once they kind of open that gate, it's gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. it's gonna go. Yeah, the reason was the airport was the uh the uh communication for guiding the plane Correct. in bad weather. Mm -hmm. They used 5G network. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay. We had one person that couldn't get on, so Mary Abby went to save the day. Sorry about that. <laughs> Aren't you glad I came here instead of staying home? Should be. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. You're fine. Oh, You're all good. You're, You're great. great. You would have been fine too. No worries. Yeah. All right. All right. So the next big change. Did anybody get this big envelope? No. 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 Nobody got this nice big envelope with braille and stuff inside. Oh, oh yeah. I no. thought, yeah, I got that. <laughs> I mailed, I mailed it in, I called them and then they yeah. sent me, I, mailed, I don't know what it's all about. It's but. from the Department of Treasury. In terms mm -hmm. of wow. And you know what it's about? Taxes. They're now, it's, so this is saying fill out form, form 9,000 so that you can tell them how you would like your materials sent to you. What a concept. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was a little sarcasm there. Oh, 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 nice. Gloria. Yes, Jenny. I got that. Yeah. Good. So these came out around December ish. Uh, and I remember as soon as they came out, I went to fill out the form, and the form wasn't ready yet. Oh, okay. Uh, exactly. You know, exactly. Yeah. So, um, but this is something new, and we all need to know about it. Mm -hmm. um, you can request from the IRS how you want your materials from them sent to you. You can get it in Braille. You can have it um, in See? large print. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can have it in electronic format. Okay. okay. So they are off. So you make, you tell them how you would like the, the materials um, and then moving forward, they're going to send it. And, and, and what are you guys on? Not about time. What are you so? Because I don't get a ten forty anymore, and then you can't even get them at the post. But I I use AARP to do my taxes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. is that what it is? Is a ten forty or no? It just it simply means that any communications that happens between mm -hmm. the IRS and yourself, they will share it with you in that particular right. format. Even Braille, huh? Mm -hmm. oh. Even Braille, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is fantastic. It is. Yep. Fantastic. It is. And that's that was that was my sarcasm, Janice. It's, it's, this is like really, this is about time. Um, they're asking all of us to use the internet for everything, but yet they're not offering us the materials in the, in a manner in which we can access them. So Gloria, I didn't yes. get that mailing. Is there a phone number to call and ask? How so we get that choice. So you can, and it's probably how you, um, uh, potentially how you filed. So yes, you ready? The telephone number yeah. is 800-829-1000. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 I'm done, <laughs> you, Gloria. Yeah. All right. And we just asked for the form to fill out for choices. They call it Form 9000. It's for I got that. Yep. Yeah, you're gonna give a copy for everyone anyway, right? Excuse me. Give a copy. I don't. I don't have access to it. You have to go to the IRS website oh. and fill out the form. And what the form is? It's the. It's called Form Nine Thousand. A note. Yes, please. I was talking with the uh, Blue Cross Blue Store in Warwick mm -hmm. the other day. Mm -hmm. They could they offer a few little in person seminars. You know, one is on heart health, one was on diabetes. Um, anyway, they also always say go online to register. When I called, I said I'm visually impaired, and they said, Oh, no problem. And they have a concierge service, mm -hmm. just so everybody knows. And I was able to register for three different seminars by phone. So they were most accommodating, uh, was not a difficulty at all. Yeah, yeah Blue Cross is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah, they, they are incredible. Um, oh, so okay, did everyone on the Zoom end hear what Tracy said? I want to make sure that you can hear her. I don't remember we muted those. Oh yeah, we did. We <laughs> <laughs>
I heard it. Yes. Okay. Thank All you, right. Jimmy. Thanks. You can be our sound check lady. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, just just to, to be clear, the form is called 9,000. Okay. 9,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they call it the alternative media preference form. All right. And one more time, the telephone number is. 800 829 1040. All right. And you get a real person? You actually, yes. uh, I do believe you get a real person. You may have to go through a couple of prompts, but you do get a real person. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Usually I mean, they say, ask this. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I was fighting for a social security number, and they finally changed it to a false social security because I kept saying to myself, you know, here we are. We got to protect our social security. That's why they gave a fourth one to put in your bag, your pocketbook, whatever. Fran, you had a question. Yes, is that for just visually impaired, or is it for legally blind? Yeah. It's if you have if you have difficulty re accessing print. Oh. So it kind of covers the. It's an umbrella term. So if, if you, you have, have difficult time reading and accessing printed information. Mm -hmm. They'll give it to you in Braille, large print, or electronic. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing we got to do is what make sure when they turn on tell us, uh, press one or yeah. press two. Whoa, I hate you that. You can't see it, you know? Yes, I know, I know. Yeah, it's, it's, I know. Gloria, it's I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't said Daryl, he said, I'm sorry, I'm going to stick to next you because I did operate it. <laughs> Janice, to his phone, change your phone number. Yeah. No. All right. All right. So that's so that's something that's that's new and and uh and up and coming. So now you guys are empowered uh, with some of the information. So well, if you, yeah. yes, exactly. What is it? They send you all the tax forms or yeah, any any communication. Oh, anything. So any communication that you have with the IRS, because here's the thing: is this is going to go into scams, which Mary Abby's going to talk about in a few minutes. But remember that the IRS is not going to call you. Okay, they're not going to call you and say you owe money, give me a credit card, that, none of that. They're always going to mail you mm. information. So based on the law, we have to get the mail in a format in which we can access. Mm. So, so that hence the reason for this form and the reason for this new process. They, so ne they never email. No, and they don't do that. Either. It's always... You get it in the mail, like hard copy, so to speak. And speaking of Braille, mm -hmm. all the all stuff besides the IRS, another thing with like with anything with my social, I'm in shared living, so like my social security, my home provider gets um, my social security stuff in print, and I also get a form a copy of it in Braille. Very cool. Yeah. As well. Perfect. Perfect. So Gloria, this yep. handles IRS communications. Yes. And how about social security? You can request electronic because they'll send it to you on a CD um, in a Word document, or you can ask for it in Braille and probably large print as well. Okay. Is there a number to reach social security to ask for an alternative media? You probably have to just call their regular. They level. have a, a regular 800 number. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You can also set up an online account and request. actually get your verification letter on the actual. Website. You can download yes. it there too. Yep. 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 Thank yep. you. Yep. Great info. You guys are awesome. Cool. We do our best. Okay. So we're talking a little bit about money. Um, money. Money. Did you guys know that um, that we have access to what's called an uh, an eye bill reader? No. Yeah. <laughs> so there is a little device. It's called an eye bill. And, oh uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, it. It, you actually slide your currency in it and it identifies what the currency is. So if oh it's a twenty dollar bill, it'll tell you twenty dollar bill. Yeah, they call I, it the, I, yeah. they call it the meaningful <laughs> access program. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Carry the two of us in the same room. It's not <laughs> um, so this is US currency reader application form. So if you are an individual with a vision impairment or you have difficulty at being able to see your money, you can apply. These are free. Um, you can apply for uh, for a U.S. currency reader. Hmm. So it's moneyfactory.gov. And you can also go to uh, reading the uh, library. And that's right. Providence. That's right. Yep. We contacted about uh, Bob, B-A-R-B, 
I got help out the fun and all of them. And Miss Miss Water. Yes, Alicia. Alicia. Mm -hmm. Do they have a phone number? <laughs> so no, yeah. you have to you have to fill out an application. Mm -hmm. uh, it says please note applications provided below are below are form fillable PDFs. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So folks, if you are, folks, yes, Laura, you could also call like that. Me and just said it's hard to see who it is on there. Uh, uh, because the voices are kind of. Um, you can call the regional library. Um, I think it's five seven four ninety three ten. I think that, and they will help you um obtain the uh, I bill. I have one, and it's uh. Sometimes when you, I also have a money app on the phone. But sometimes if you, um, just don't feel like taking your phone out, it's really small. It takes AAA batteries. And if you don't, if you're not comfortable with it announcing, yeah, twenty dollar bill, you can um set it to like vibrate, and it vibrates like a certain way if it's a twenty or a certain way if it's a five, whatever. It so that yeah, it was created for the pop for both the blind and the blind deaf population. Yes. Oh. oh. <laughs> so it offers vibration, okay, instead of speaking, um, if you oh. want. So you can change it. So if you're blind, you can have it speak. If you're blind deaf, you can have it vibrate. Thank you, Angie. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So, and then the one of the last um, big changes. Um, that I just want to share with you is um, is the big changes that are happening in Medicare in terms of how mm. we how we access that information. Um, so from from what I've heard, Medicare most all the Medicare things will all be done online now. <gasps> so there won't be no physical papers. But here's the thing: is you'll still have access to what they call ship. As this, this population that works at the senior centers that help us through our Medicare, they help kind of guide us. Um, these people have been trained. Those people are still around um, and they're still gonna be there to, to help us through this. Um, but many of the documentations will not be in print anymore. You'll have to get it um, through the Yeah, internet. but I have a question. Wow. A lot of people don't have computers. I know that, I know. And not a lot of people that, don't want to know how to use them. Not only that, but a lot of people don't have access to the internet. Right. And what about and the that's internet? Expensive. That's what about crazy. the internet? It is crazy. It is. I'm I'm right on the same ba bandwagon mm. you guys are on. Mm. You know, I'm I'm not happy about it either because there are too many indiscrepancies yeah. for people to be able to access it. We live on the East Coast. We're very spoiled and fortunate. You know, I know myself, I travel, you know, to Canada and I get into Maine and if I can't get the internet, I'm having a, a hissy fit, you know, <laughs> and it's just, and it's just because I, I'm, I'm so spoiled to it and what we have here, but yeah. not everybody has access to it. Yeah, I don't understand how you can go to like into the city of Boston and have internet in the, out in the uh, in public, but yet you can't have it everywhere else. I know. Yeah. When I go to Wisconsin, I stay in my family they live kind of out in the boonies mm -hmm. out in the country mm -hmm. and my grandma's wi-fi is mm -hmm. i don't want to say horrible mm -hmm. yeah but um my aunt Corey doesn't have internet and when my cousin comes and my second cousin comes and he spends the night um He's like, can I use your hot spot? You yeah. know, ask, like, <laughs> great ask. He's like, Grant, can I use your hot spot? I'm like, I use my time at Aunt Corey's house to give the internet a break. And if I want to listen to music, I use the music that's on my phone. We just, it, the interesting thing is, is they're instituting a lot of these things, but they're not really preparing you know, they're not really preparing us. Um, I, I will tell you this. Um, here's what I read. Um, most of you have heard um, through the COVID about the emergency broadband uh, yes. monies. That yeah. Released. Oh, yeah, I got that. That's well, changing. It is. It's, it's, that's exactly what yeah, I Yeah, they pay for my cost table for a year. Yep. So there was supposed to be like a six month or a year program. And what they found was they found 
exactly to be true what we just said, mm -hmm. that a lot of people are struggling trying to get the internet, trying to afford it, trying to pay for it. So I did read that they are coming out with a new program through the FCC to assist with getting ac getting access to the internet. Um, it was it was said to give you fifty dollars off the bill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's changing to uh, thirty dollars now. Yeah, I saw twenty five and thirty dollars. Also, they give you but then a, of a computer if you want to buy it, but yeah, you got to pay the payment. Yeah. Yeah. That's included. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, so these are so um when when this new program comes out, I would I would just keep an eye um. Uh, for those of you that can um, do like a Google search, maybe do a Google search for um, this program to see when it's going to come out. Because here's what I found is the carriers really don't care and they're not really letting everybody know, but yet that's what they're, that's what they're supposed to be doing. They're supposed to be putting it on their website and letting everybody know. But if you call them, they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so wait a minute, this is the FCC? This was, is this is the Broadband Relief Fund? I just have Hey, this is Angie Cox has it right when you call it says if you want to learn about the new broadband program press one and it gives you how to apply and everything and um so okay. yeah well, Cox really good about that so good awesome awesome Verizon not so much you have to call the disability number or something to sure. dig deep but Cox is I have to say that Cox is really good about it all right, is this going to be for a, just a certain time or permanent or? From what from what I've read, they're putting the program together and it's and it's going to be like a year by year thing. Okay, from what I can and see. They're going to take something off your internet each month. You're going to it's going to be something you're going to have to apply for. It's going to it's going to be something that has income guidelines. Um, and I'm just not from yeah, what I have, make sure you have Medicaid. I, I don't know. I don't know how what they're qualifications would be for it. Uh, I know people who have the broadband assistance with Cox. Yeah. Their their criteria is um seniors on Medicare and Medicaid and families with school aged children who get reduced or free lunch. Yeah. Okay, so it's Medicare and Medicaid. Yes. Wow. Oh. Medicaid. Is it and or, or? Or, or okay, or and, mm -hmm. it, it, or so that's what they say. So that means it means both, or one or the other. So they say and or. So Joanne, just call the three eight three two thousand number and follow the prompts, and um, they'll help you through it. Okay, and that's Cox. Yeah. Cox. If you but you have to have a Cox um uh, thing or. You have to have like internet with them already, or yeah, something. Yeah, have them as a carrier. Okay. Yeah. yeah. New okay. And now to get back to this Medicare. Yeah. Go ahead, girl. Yeah. yeah. All the all the papers that like I get you know monthly statements saying how much they took up. It's going to all be online now. Eventually, yes, and that leads me to that leads me to the patient portals. You guys are. Uh -huh. uh -huh. These are the big changes that are really going to affect us. And it's being able to access the internet. It's the financial piece. It's the accessibility piece. It's the training learning piece. It's this is just multifaceted. So this is why I really wanted to let everybody know so that we can start preparing. So getting back to the Medicare thing, a lot of things now are starting to happen. Mm -hmm. um, I went for a test not too long ago, and she said, if you want the piece of paper, you're going to have to wait a month. If you want the results in two days, go on the patient portal. Yeah. Oh and then when you mail it, it takes 10 days to mail it, and they get upset. They're going to pay the late payment, yeah. and then they'll offer so, so there's so for those of you that know what it is, basically a patient portal is is a way that you can communicate with your doctor using a yeah. secured internet connection. So you're not just emailing the doctor because that's not secured. Mm -hmm. Anybody can get that information. What you're you're actually on a website that is secured. Uh, and you're actually sending this information through this secure network. So that's like, what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Uh, communicate with my doctor. Yeah. 
Halo, H-E-A-L-O-W. For, for, for some, Kate with him. Yeah. So for some people, you know, that's really helpful. Carrie, did you have a something like my chart? That's mm -hmm. what I'm that's I the use. other one. Yeah, same right. the same. yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> yep. Yeah. There's my chart. It's oh. another one. Yes, oh, okay. That they talk There's about. my chart and telehealth. Um, yep. Yeah. Halo. Yeah, yeah, Halo. There's, there's, yeah, there's a there's yeah, a couple Halo. of them. Um, a lot of them are put by simple practice and yeah. um so what i do there's a um there's a link on their simple practice website feedback link i'm always harping on them with accessibility mm -hmm. and one of them actually wrote back to me because i write to them all the time it's the angie show i call it <laughs> and, um, so i i i use the um telehealth app a lot with different providers I said, listen, they're paying to use a stinking app and we have to use a stinking app to conduct our business. It's not accessible. Y you know, we're patients here. We have rights. And um, all the, I said, don't quote the ADA because you're getting it all wrong. And I know the ADA verse from verse and I quoted them. And, you know, they got in touch with that because I use a lot of it on my phone, sometimes the computer, but they got in touch with Apple. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, the app is somewhat accessible, better than before. You know, I'm still working on it, but uh, you know, the my chart, you know, it's to be desired. I don't know, Carrie, if you have trouble with the my chart with accessibility. I mean, it's workable. I don't have any either myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's um, it's workable. I mean, I don't either, but for the beginner people, it's overwhelming. So, yeah, the my chart's nice. You get your like I got a blood test yesterday. I got the results today. Uh, you know, I got to go for one at two. And uh, so yeah, it's 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 easier. But I'm thinking about people like Joanne, uh, Cindy, uh, Tracy, other people there. Like, how are they going to do this? You know, it's just the it's 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 thinking thinking. That, that's all that I have to say. Okay, the anti show is over for now. <laughs> so so just i just wanted to i basically just wanted to make everybody aware of patient portals mm -hmm. and as angie said some good some bad mm -hmm. and we all have to advocate for ourselves um and obviously the bottom line is um we are you know insight is considered um a doctor's office so we do fall under hipaa guidelines so this is something that we can assist you with remember we have to follow all these guidelines yeah. Yeah. so i'm just letting people know if there's anything that you need we're all learning kind of together um so if there's any help or assistance that you need whether it be advocating troubleshooting or just you know going through the process you know let us help you if we can I have another question. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut off there. Um, I know it's going to be a lot of changing. Mm. And I find that when I call the Home Depot and uh, uh, I say, I hate phones, you know what I mean? All these things. They get a shot one. I love it. And I, you know, communicate with them. I said, I want that. Well, uh, and they said, wait a minute. It's a shot list. It's cool. Cool. Yeah, the new stuff that came out. Awesome. You know, these patient putters, are they the ones that like in doctor's offices and keep asking you to sign up on? Yes, 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 yes. And you do have to get a code from your doctor to be able to access it. You can't just sign up on yeah. your own. You have to call your doctor and ask if they have a patient portal. If they do, they will send you a letter with a code on it, or you can have them, you know, you can ask if they can give it to you verbally or something. Oh, excuse me. What, Andrew? That, what was Shannon saying that Home Depot has a what? That you can do a chat you can chat with the customer service online if you need to oh okay thank you a lot of companies you can chat online these days yeah, yeah. Larry, <coughs> are all the visits to insight considered uh medical no no no, oh. nope. no it's just questions? it's just how it's just how the um how the agency is kind of classified she was asking if visits in that are considered medical Oh, okay. So, the follow up on Joanne, the patient portal, is that where I get my Medicare monthly? No, 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 oh. no. I feel like you're, 
um, your like, doctor's statements, your bill statements from your doctor. It's got your medications, your um, okay, you know, yeah. any records that your doctor put in. Your tests, your, yeah, your blood, test yeah. results, your blood work, yep. all that. All that. Yep. But then totally. there's a separate one with the medical. Totally yeah. separate. Yeah. Totally, oh, yeah, totally yeah. separate. Yep, totally separate. My, so, my primary care doesn't even use it. You know, uh, all my other doctors are on it, but my primary care doesn't. That's not helpful. So here's, so moving forward, we're going to be getting more information mm. about the Medicare and their changes. Mm. And my goal is to keep everybody posted. Mm. So oh, it's, thank you. I, just, thank you. I just want everybody to know like this change is happening, but they don't have the processes all down yet. So what I was hoping to do is either in the spring or maybe even in the fall, just before, you know, the whole Medicare reinstatement thing, maybe we'll do another workshop, particularly on what these changes were, what's happening and how we need to deal with it. Gloria. Yes, sir. But somebody like me, mm -hmm. you know, is going to have a hard time with this. A lot mm -hmm. of people said you could go to the library, but you don't want to do it. Just personal information. That's if correct. people that don't have a website or to get right. help, you got to be in a safe place that's with right. someone you trust. Yep. So oftentimes, and if, if that's the case, then I would encourage you to contact your senior center. Every senior center has, they call it a SHIP advisor, mm -hmm. yeah. SHP. Um, and it's basically, so these people are very well educated and know how to advise you through the Medicare Medicaid process. So right now, that's kind of like who I'm looking to and who I'm referring to um, um, as, as it's suggested on the internet. But I'm waiting for them to come out with these changes so that we can then educate you guys. Mm -hmm. All right. So those are the, those are the, the big, big changes um, that are kind of coming up this year. Um, that we're paying close attention to. Um, and again, like I said, you're going to hear more about the Medicare stuff uh, as we move on. Yes. Medicare, of, of course, is federal. Mm -hmm. Don't they have to follow accessibility? Yep. Oh. <laughs> yes, they do. I don't have to finish the thing. Nope. Nope. So can they implement a system that is not accessible? Not federally, no. no. Okay. I really care is federal. So we've just gone in a whole circle. Yep. Okay. So they're supposed to be providing their documents in, a, in an accessible way. And they'll be sending us a form. Yeah. 10,000 to fill out. I think they should give the application how the doctor read it. You know, because the mm -hmm. doctor don't have time to look at all the old quads. Requirement. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We need some kind of a pay visit. Sometimes stuff is far behind for everything else. So if you don't want or you don't need to go on and ha have a patient portal, that's just no, if you no, want. You don't okay. need to. Yeah. <laughs> that's only if you're not. I just, worry. again, my, our job here is to make sure that you know what it is, you know what it's used for, and if you need help using it, we're here. Okay. My, my grandma's got a patient portal. I, I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I know in the iPhones, there's something called the health app. And one of the things that's in the health app is like connect with your, your medical records yep. or something like that. Okay. Is that the same thing? As no. So the health, health app is, is just to keep track of your personal health. You can use it to keep track of, um, it keeps track of your steps that you're walking. Some people use it for blood pressure or um, women use it for cycles. That kind of thing and sugar levels. Um, sugar levels that you know if you have diabetes you can use it for that kind of thing um so the health app you can you can kind of keep track of your own symptoms and your own medical care if you like and you can link it to those mm -hmm. portals but it's not the same thing so. speaking of blood pressure i have a, a wrist blood pressure monitor that's supposed to be talking mm -hmm. but i have not really figured out how to work it um, <laughs> Doesn't really come out talking out of the box, as far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's always good. <laughs> speaking of, of which, um, I have a question. My, um, I know this is confidential, but um, my home provider had. Um, do they have talking? Like, I'm just curious. Do they have talking pulse oximeter? Pulse oh, yeah, like symmetry sure. machines. Okay. We're hunting for yeah, them. We're, we're, we're looking. actually in the, in looking. We had a couple of people ask for that. So we're looking. Yeah. We'll let you know, Amber. 
I bought an oximeter, yeah. but I can't read the display. Yep. So I, I think they do. Batteries in it. Mm. I still can't read it. It's they should have it. talking ones, and I, I'm doing some research because we have others that are yeah. asking. Mine, so. mine beeps at, if it's not, uh, at 94, it stops beeping. Anything under 94, it beeps. Oh, cool. It should. <laughs> That's better right. than nothing. Yes. Right. Right. All right, cool. That's interesting. All right, we went ready to move on to another topic. Yep. All, All right. right. Thank you. Yep. All right. Oh. Very happy. Yeah. The mask on you today. I just I know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, thank you. Yes, you're welcome. So we're gonna talk now about scams. Oh, we yes. love scams. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. <laughs> Actually, we don't love scams. <laughs> oh, I absolutely. <sighs> okay, so let's talk quickly about what a scam is. We all have experienced them, I think, at this point. Oh, um, yeah. So a scam is a, an attempt to fish for an individual's confidential information for personal or misleading gains. So that means that they're trying to get your information and they're going to use it to benefit them. It is not to benefit you at all. No. Um, that is the short answer of what a scam is. Um, so what is a scammer's goal? Um, I'll give you one word, then I'll explain. A scammer's goal is money. Yep. They um, want your money. money. Oh, oh, yeah. so <laughs> they, they want money that they can get directly from you. They want information that can be sold for money. They want control of your, your computer. That can be used to generate money. So let's, oh. let's break that. So money that they can get directly from you. So that's like, hey, um, this is a very very basic you know example. But hey, your your grandma, she's she's hurt and she needs money. She's in the hospital. Send it to me and I'll take care of it. What? Mm. What? <laughs> um, I got I got a, I got a text message the other day and it said Amazon.com. Yep. Your Order yeah. is uh, is being processed. It's going to cost you five hundred and thirty six dollars. Call this number to call this number to call this number to uh, to to cancel it. And if you if you look at it, it might look like it says Amazon.com, but if you're using Voiceover, it actually says Amaz zero N because the, the O is a zero and not an. Oh, for Amazon. <laughs> so then I'm like, wait, what was I order five hundred dollars of Amazon? <laughs> I, don't, I don't even have I, what? Yeah, yeah, I got a phone call like that the other day. I said, I don't even have an Amazon account. Yeah, wait. and so since when does so you have to think about it like this? When does Amazon even email you or I mean text you about your orders? Never. When they're yes, right. So when they arrive. Right. When they arrive. Right. Yeah, that's it. So you have to think about that. So that's that's what they want. They want your um. They want you to directly give them your your money, your money, information that can be sold for money. That means they'll take if you you know they may call you and say, "What's your social security number? Where, this is the bank. What's your social security number? What's your credit card number?" And then they're gonna take that and they're gonna sell it and make lots of money. The one I'm getting hit lot lately now is surveys. Uh, yep, surveys. Yeah. Well, well, surveys are surveys are a different story. I think sir, we can talk about surveys. Well, that's not that's, interrupt. That was yeah, Mary, I, and it looks like the Mary but I still won't answer Mary, the question. Yeah, Richard? Mary Abby, it's Richard. Yes. Um, right. I'm a YouTube junkie and, and I laugh at these videos. I, I, I listen to these scam videos somebody's recorded or or turn the other table on them. And another one of these scams is they'll call you and say you owe $5,000 in court fines and you yep, can simply pay by iTunes gift cards. Yeah, okay. Go and go on um, get iTunes gift cards, you know. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Richard. So. John, did you have Yeah. Yeah. Mary Abby. Uh I, I was talking to somebody from Amazon about three, four days ago. And they do make phone calls. They do absolutely make phone calls, but they never text you and say your order is going to be charged. It's oh. going to be five hundred dollars. Call us to cancel it. They would never do that. Um, and as, as I said, if you use Voiceover or even if you just look very closely, some of the letters in the word Amazon yeah. might be incorrect. It may not look like what it look what it sh you know what they. Oh, look like. okay. It might replace a few okay. letters with numbers that look similar. Like mm -hmm. the O might be a zero, mm -hmm. the I might be a number one or an L. Um, uh -huh. 
So keep that in mind. Mary Abby. Yes. Uh, a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, I received in the mail from Florida Postal Service that I was scammed and that there's a, a case going. So I, of course, don't believe it. it's coming out of Florida. So I called my local, I'm living in Coventry at the time. I called the local Coventry post office and I asked for the postmaster general. And I says, I have this letter before me. I have the address of Florida post office. I have the phone number. And I says, does this sound real? And she said it, she confirmed it sounded real. So I called down there and it was real. Somebody had used my social security in a scam, but they luckily wow. caught it. It was through eBay that they so, were scamming other people and using me as bait, you know, but so they Richard, caught, you, caught him. You are a but great, I, exactly how to handle that kind of situation. And um, that's something we're gonna but talk I, about. I, that's a really fantastic I way was to very that. leery of that. I was leery of that letter, so I double checked with my local office. Hey, is this a letter? You know, is this a local phone number down in Florida? And yeah, yada so, yada, you know. Yeah. Thank you, Richard, for sharing. So let's um, yeah, let's move forward, and we can share examples at the end. I'm sure because I, I think we've all had these things happen to us. So let's um, let's hold our questions because there's a big, there's a lot of information here. I think. Um, so also control of your PC that can be used to generate money. And this is something that some people don't know about. So this is a really interesting point here. Some people might say, um, hey, you know, you have a virus on your computer. We need to, we need to help you out. You should uh, click on this link and we'll have access to it so we can take care of that virus for you. Nope. And that is a general red flag that if you click on that link, mm -hmm. they're going to Go into your PC and yeah. some people keep credit card information on there, password, mm -hmm. banking information. So do not give anyone access to your computer unless you are the one initiating it yourself um, and you know who it is that you're talking to. Um, I have a question for that. I yes. I don't pay attention with it. I just delete it. I yes, annoy it. I don't care. Good. They're going to do that. Put it in the mailbox. Yep, good. So what to look for when you are wondering if it's a scam, if something is a scam? Let's look, let's look at the different criteria that a scam might fall under. The first is a request for personal information, such as your social security <coughs> information, credit card information, address, birthday, password, or phone number, access to your computer or phone, requests for sums of money to pay a fee. So these are things that they might ask you for. So you might say, oh, you know, they're just asking for my birthday. That's no, that's no problem. Mm -hmm. But if they have your birthday and if they know your name, they can look you up on a lot of different databases. Yep. So then you, you, your, the rest of your information is something that they can find if they have your mm -hmm. birthday and your name. It's, it's simple. And they might even know what state you're in. That makes it even easier for them to, to, to break it down even further and say, oh, yeah, this is, this is John in Providence. You know? Uh oh, we're having some phone issues, I think. That's why I did on Facebook. I don't care um, for yeah, my data right, right. So then we have we have claims. They, they might also claim that you have won money and need to transfer mm -hmm. transfer a small fee to collect it. Oh, I've seen this one before. Um, they'll say, Yeah, you you won five million dollars, or um mm -hmm. some famous uh, some relative of yours that you don't even know has passed away and left you two million dollars. If you pay us <laughs> A thousand dollars, we'll get it to you. <laughs> so, if there's someone that's telling you that you have a sum of money waiting for you, but you need to pay them to get it, does that make sense? No. No. So you would avoid that. Take it out of the money. You yeah, yeah, take it out of my money. Yeah, right. Thank exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, there's some other criteria that you need to look out for as well. Requests for banking information. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that you never ever even want to give. So some even family members you would never give that stuff to. I mean, banking information is really sensitive. And Bank of America is not going to call you and say, hey, this is Bank of America. Can you please give us your bank account number? Why no. They, they yeah, have, exactly. yeah, they have all of your information already. No, no genuine uh, financial institution is going to call you and say, hey, can you verify your bank number, your bank account number, or your social security number, your credit card number? They already have all that information. Mm -hmm. um, the only time that they can ask you for maybe your your social or maybe um, maybe more identifying information is if you call the bank 
and they have to verify your identity. So never show your state ID either. Yep. So um, if someone is asking for that kind of information, it should be only if you're calling them and you know who they are. So, um, something also to look forward uh, look into is an unusual email address. Yes. Um, unusual looking links or unusual looking phone numbers. Oh, oh I'll say so. So somebody, somebody had uh, forwarded an email to us here and said, hey, this looks like a scam, but I'm not sure. Can you let me know if it is? And it was, um, what was it? It was for, it, when Verizon was paying them? It was, was that one? No, no, it was one of those uh, antivirus softwares. Okay. Um, and it, it was, you know, an antivirus software company that was saying, hey, you're, you're expiring soon. Um, this is the credit card we have on file. You're going to be charged X amount of money. Yeah, it's like Norton. It's Norton. That's exactly yeah. it, Carrie. Yes, thank you. And if you look at it, though, the email address that it's coming from is a Gmail account. Do you think Norton is really going to be sending you something from uh, um, Bob52 at gmail.com? <laughs> no, that's it. No, because Norton had their own official email addresses that they would be using. They wouldn't be sending you emails from a Gmail account. Um, unusual phone numbers. Let's say somebody from Rhode Island says, "Hey, this is a this is Kim in Rhode Island. Uh, you need you know we need some information from you." But they're giving you a area code that looks like it's from Canada. That, that doesn't make sense. <clears throat> Something to keep out an eye out for. Um, your the links in your email might look funny too, and that they say, "Hey, click on this link and you can get a free cruise." But the link looks mm -hmm. weird. It looks really short. And it, it, it doesn't end in .com, and it doesn't make any sense. So that's not something you would click on. Um, so, some some food for thought there. Uh, something else to really look forward to is an abundance of misspelled words or grammatical errors from seemingly official senders. Mm -hmm. if, if if Bank of America or Citizens Bank is emailing you and they have a lot of misspelled words and, and their sentences don't make sense, chances are it's not real. Um, Sometimes they put emojis. They put little pictures. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, America's not going to use emojis. Right. They're not going to use gifts. They're not going to put images. Uh, right. They're not going to put ha ha lol. Yeah, none of that. None of that. Mm -hmm. um, requests for you to download unfamiliar software. Gonna, if, you, if you get an email that asks you to download, or even if you're on a website that says download this software for free and you can, you know, Mil win a million dollars. No one. <laughs> Chances are that that software is there to get get access to your computer. Car warranty. Oh yeah. Car warranty. Oh, we get all those. Oh yes. Oh. Yeah, we'll talk about the car warranty. That's a big one. <laughs> oh. So I turn around, tell them, uh, can you find my car? I have found it. Just yet. <laughs> What's the matter, Jenny? I have to go to the bathroom. Okay. Do you wanna? Or do you want to go? Oh, no worries, Jenny. No worries, Jenny. Hi, Jennifer. Good to see you. Oh, what what you that? That? Bathroom. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. 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 To look forward to uh, not look forward to no. those. It's a threat of dire consequences if you don't obey. Oh, if you don't do this, then you're going to be charged so much money, or the government will be after you. Oh, I got one one time that was some something like, oh, if you don't do this, you're going to have a lawsuit after you. What? Okay. Yep. So that usually I just hang up on them. Keep card available. Yeah. Um. Then there's also promises of money or prize. For performing a tax, a task or app or action. So if they promise you anything for doing something, oh, I get these sometimes where this is not quite a scam, but it's kind of unethical. Where you buy an Amazon product and they say, hey, if you give us five stars, we'll give you a free product. That's not being very honest. So I've gotten those before, and that's not very honest. Honestly, what I would do there is actually give them a one star and say they're influencing the review here and asking for a five star when they don't deserve it. Um, Claims that it's not a hoax, very suspicious that they say this is not a scam, and then it looks like a scam. Chances are it's a scam. 
<laughs> because you don't you shouldn't have to convince me that right. it's not a scam if it's not a scam um contains technical sounding language and or specific names and organizations to make the message seem legitimate this is kind of hit or miss i mean obviously there are places that will use technical sounding language but if, if it doesn't make sense how they're employing it be suspicious i find is uh sometimes you you look up something on amazon mm -hmm. and you go to your social media and they and they do an advertisement for that, that item that's a different yeah that's a bit of a different one we can talk about that um that is they're tracking kind of your browsing history, but that's not quite a scam. They're just able to see what you looked at recently and employ it and, and advertise it through there. Is that a cookie? It's a cookie. Ah. Good job, Tracy. It's a cookie. I didn't have any clue what that was. Good job. So, yep. They take, so Facebook, for example, Facebook is a big culprit of this. So they will take your information that they, they, they put these little cookies in your browser and they can see what you're looking at what websites you're visiting and then they can take that information and advertise to you based on lock those um you put them on an iphone iphone apple has recently made that something you can block you can block tracking is what they're called um otherwise you might be able to block their cookies but it's harder to use it if you do do you do that on a computer uh i don't know if it really truly blocks your browsing history from that they're very smooth. But even clearing cookies sometimes. You can clear your cookies. You can also make sure that you don't remain logged in after you sign out, after you close out the browser. That's something you can. That you can you uh, send me instructions on how to clear cookies? Uh, yeah, I'll do some research for you, Tracy. I'll send it over to you. No problem. Um, and I'll give you a rating. We can talk about it. Well, Wonderful. it's dependent on your browser. If you're gonna, if you're gonna stay for the um here the the um discovery you can go through um safari and then clear oh yep she doesn't have a, a an iphone Android. oh so that's why and okay. so on the computer it's a little bit different too so yeah we can definitely go over that um wonderful Tracy. yeah um they may also urge you to forward the message to everybody have you seen those oh, forward this yeah. to six friends and yep. then you'll get yeah, like a chain letter you'll have good luck for six weeks <laughs> yeah uh, what? i don't know that works that's so Oftentimes, those emails may have viruses attached to mm -hmm. them. Um, yep. Maybe the email has already been forwarded multiple times. Mm -hmm. You can tell by the number of the little FW before the subject line. What's an FW? You know when you're reading an email and somebody forwards you and it says FW colon and then the subject? Oh, yeah. If it has like six or seven forward symbols before the subject, it's been forwarded a million times. Um, and that can be a little bit strange too. So sometimes it's legitimate, but sometimes it's suspicious. All right, so let's go through some examples. I mean, we've gone, we kind of have given a lot of examples already, but here's, okay, you owe money. A man telephones you, uh, telephone victim at work, claiming to be from Parker and Parker Law Firm. He demands that the victim pay $1,000 to settle a payday loan, which she never took out. The caller is extremely aggressive, refusing to hang up, the phone when a when a co-worker asked that he call back at a later time caller also had the consumer's social security number and the driver's license number uh oh that's not good um so that's definitely something you would hang up and then you would probably report that to someone because they went have your social security so that's the point who do you report it to no yeah we'll go over that at the, at the bottom of this oh, okay. absolutely because that's important Here's another one. I've, I've called Verizon and they don't care. No, they don't care. <laughs> um, let's say you receive a phone call from a man claiming to be from Microsoft Windows yes. Service Center. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 First of all, why would they call you? Aren't you supposed to call them? Yeah. <laughs> Caller says, my computer has lots of malware oh. on it, which Much is showing data. up which is showing up at Microsoft. Wait, why do they know that already? That's creepy. Um, the man will clean it up for me. He talks me through opening the Windows event viewer to see errors and warnings, proving that my PC needs his help. The phone number caller ID shows 011, which is weird. Or zero. Or, yeah. yeah or, zero. or zero. The man wants to, me to allow him to remotely access my computer so he could clean my PC. Um, he hung up on me when I asked his phone number to call back in case we got disconnected. Oh, very suspicious. 
I would not advise. First of all, why would they know that you have a virus? I think you're supposed to call them if you're having issues. So, yeah, right. Right. So, how to prevent scams? Be suspicious of some sensational or exciting but false statements. The whole the goal is to get you to click or react immediately without thinking. Again, you're gonna win a cruise. That's pretty exciting. I mean, hey, I want a cruise. That'd be awesome. But chances are you probably didn't win a cruise. Sorry to say, unless you did like enter a lottery or something like that. Right. Be wary of attachments. When you're when you're reading an email, um, I've I've gotten a few open this attachment and you know and but it's like a, a sender that I've never recognized and the the content of the email makes no sense. Open this attachment to read your car warranty information. Hey, I don't have a car, and you guys don't want me to have one. <laughs> um, I love that. So verify and ignore or and ignore commands and requests for action. Okay, so if they're asking you to do something, um, again, send me money to do this. You never open a link you don't know. Exactly, don't open a link you don't know. Mm -hmm. um, verify the identity of the message sender. So again, check the email address that it's coming from. I mean, yes, Norton could totally be sending you an update that you're, you're expiring, your stuff is expiring, but check the email address first if they're asking you to pay money. Okay. Um, Telephone the company using a well publicized phone number for verification. Again, like Richard did, Richard did the right thing there. He called and and asked the postmaster if it was correct and she verified it. And then he even went and double checked it with Florida and they said it was correct. So he verified it before he um, did anything about it. That was great. Be familiar with how links should look. Recognize suspicious links. The links should look like HTTP www. Google, uh, no, Amazon.com. If it looks like HTTP www.amazon.cc slash a bunch of numbers, a bunch of letters. Um, our websites in America should look like something .com, .edu, .gov, .org. Uh, .org. If you're getting something from the IRS and it's not a .gov website, it's not real. So if it's a government agency that you're supposed to be getting something from, and if it's not a .gov website, be very careful. Do not click on it unless you can really verify what it is. Um, educational institutions use .edu, um, or organizations.org. So if any any links from us will you know have insight.org. So be familiar with how the link should look. The only different website I've seen is IRO. They use the .io. Yes, they do. IRA does use IO. What is that? Um, IRA is the, the app that you can call using video and then they can help you with different tasks. Oh. They, their website is IRA.io, um, but IO is not uncommon. There's also itch.io, which is also fine. It's a fine website. So there's, there's a few websites that are, that do have different uh, endings like that. Oh. But again, if you didn't ask for that information, it, 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 it's probably strange. It's not probably safe if you're not looking for something. Um, and if you know where it's supposed to come from and it's, it's not the right looking website, then uh, be careful. Um, again, be wary of shortened links. So people these days can these days can shorten them and make them look extra short. So it usually is like bit.ly slash and then a few numbers yes, or letters. Those are shortened links. They're not, they're, it's hiding, it's kind of a mask. It's, it's hiding the actual link from you so you can't see it. Um, so what you can do, I think, is you can right click on it and you can ask to view link location and it will create a real link mm -hmm. and how what it's supposed to look like. Cool. Be wary of short links, like we said. Don't provide your credit card or bank account number unless you are actually paying for something. So if someone's emailing you asking for that information, never put that in writing. Never email it, never text it. Um, when you if you keep that kind of stuff on your phone. Make sure that you are just, just keeping it somewhere that's password protected. Applying for credit should always ask for a hot copy. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, good, good one. I like that one. Um, be especially suspicious if someone claiming to be from a company with whom you have an account asks for information that the business already has. Mm -hmm. 
about that earlier. So if they should already have it, why are they asking for it? Unless you're calling them and they need to verify your identity. All right, and if you've been, if you think you've been scammed, you do a few things. Contact lo your local police department to file a report. Sure. Provide copies of any information or documentation that may help them. So if um, they sent you a letter that that's claiming, you know, X or Y, you can, and that, that provides them a, a, a report trail so that if something does happen to you, then they have previous history to go off of. Um, that's not that's not something most people do with scam, uh, which is interesting, but it's it's something you can absolutely do, and that's what they're there for. Contact the fraud department department of each of the three major credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, um, to report that your identity has been stolen. So if they have your credit card information, if they have your social security information, any of that kind of um, really vital stuff. That's who you would call because your social security number can directly affect your credit score um, and things like that, and your financial standing. File a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, um, by calling the ID theft hotline. And I have that number for you. Okay. 877 IDTA. Oh, God. If I give it to you in letters, I'm sorry. I D T H E. FTC. Oh Lord. I know. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get that in numbers for you. Yeah, let me, I was gonna say if you want to do it now, you want to do it. You send it to the <laughs> I'll send it to you too. Okay. Because that's a, that's an important number to have. But it um, there is a number for this particular type of event. Oh, I got it right here. Look, it's in the next line. Oh geez. <laughs> oh, okay. 877 438 So 438-4338. Oh, that's nice. Let's see. 877-438-4338. And that's the fraud department at where? Federal Trade Commission. And do you get a person? I hope so. I haven't called them because I haven't gotten scammed, but I can try it for you and let you know. Yeah, I'd be curious. It's the ID theft hotline. That's for you if your identity gets stolen. <coughs> and those are some things you can do. You can also call the Social Security Department if you um you know if they ask you uh, contact the attorney general yep yeah well that's also yeah that's, that's, that's something cool. that's the next step i suppose from there mm -hmm. if your credit um if, let's say your credit card has been stolen can you call your bank yeah. um if you are i think that that's the major major stuff your your social security your credit card information um and i do know that you also now have to be careful of not just emails but you also have to be careful of text messages yes because you're not just getting these in emails anymore. They will start texting you. I've been getting them lately. Um, mm -hmm. Asking you to click on links in text messages. If you get a number from, if you get a text from a strange number, asking you to click on the link. And if you don't know who it's from, don't do it. Mm -hmm. just delete it. Mm -hmm. And Verizon actually does have a number that you can forward those text messages to, but I don't actually know if they do anything about it. So no, I'm they not, don't. Yeah. So I'm not even going to get too crazy about that. Um, but yeah, that, those are some things you can do. And if anyone has any other tips or tricks, please let us know. But scams are very uh, widespread these days. Yeah, and they're getting more, more sneakier and sneakier about it. There, and so here's what I've learned too. Um, a lot of the times, you know, if you're not a number you don't recognize, and if you do not do a voice so don't call it back unless you know you're waiting for a call from someone. Because when you call back, you're verifying to them that your number works. Yeah. And that you can, and that they, they can do it again. Um, if you answer a call and you know how it says, you know, press one to talk to a person. And if you do that, they are now aware that you're ready for the, you know, the talking and mm -hmm. they'll call you again. Mm -hmm. um, so always try to like look for that press two for a do not call list, which by the way, if you're hearing that in the phone call, then sorry, that's also a scam. Because why would Bank of America ask you to? put them on your do not call list. Yeah. Um, I'll put you on their do not call list. So does the do not call list work? Uh, it's, they still have that do not they call have to, yeah. yeah, they still do. They have to offer it legally, I think. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. They have to offer a do not call list legally, but uh, whether or not it's a different story. I always do it just because, yeah, maybe it will, maybe it will help. But it doesn't seem to be any help at all. Well, the thing is that it might help for that company, but they've already sold your information to somebody else. Yeah. So it doesn't matter because somebody Ma else. Richard. Mary Abby. Um, 
I, with my bank and my credit card, I feel two two good things. Um, I shared my email address with my bank account and in my credit card. So every time my ATM debit card is used, I get a transaction update right to my email. And the same thing, every time my credit card is used, it goes right to my email address and it shows, you know, how much was used on the credit card or my checking account ATM card. So Correct. those are so two useful hints. I also do that too, Richard. So what Richard does is that he sets up alerts on his bank account. So that whenever he gets yeah. a transaction or when he puts a transaction through, he gets a text or email. I do the same thing on my credit cards, especially. Um, so some banks, you can set it up so that you get a text immediately after an online transaction. And that I way, do it on my checking and credit card. Yes. That, you way, you know, that way, if something happens, yep. and you're like, I didn't do that. I didn't buy that. Then, then you know, my friend, yep. I'll tell you, my friend got her backpack stolen. And um, it was in the back of a car. She came back and it was gone. And all the, and she she found out that it had gotten stolen because she started getting all these text messages from her her bank saying, you know, we saw some weird activity. And this person went and spent like six hundred dollars at Target, five hundred dollars at um, I think they spent a uh, hundred dollars at like a KFC or something, like a whole bunch of weird places. And quick succession, quick succession. She knew that somebody had taken her stuff, and. Uh, mm. They actually hunted them down. They were still in the mall buying stuff with her. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yep. she got a lot of fun. Um, so, so how do you set that up? So it depends on your it depends on your bank and it depends on your um, credit card institution. The uh, other thing that uh, we caught is uh, I was told if, if the station has a tap unit on the on the on the mm -hmm. at the location, yep. you should tap rather than slide it in. It, it's also safer. Yep. So, um, so now the cards have a chip in them where a lot of new cards, you can tap it against the machine to fix your transaction at the store instead of sl sliding it in because scammers can attach like little things to it to steal the card number. Although I think mm -hmm. store, okay, I think it's ATM that you have to be careful. Of. The stores are fine. I think you're okay to slight swipe if you need to, but ATMs be careful because nobody's watching. So nobody will be able to say, oh, that person put a thing on my machine. Um, and Joanne, to answer your question, usually it's in your mobile app if you have one, or on the website, you can go to the alerts section and set one up. Okay, so if, if you have a mobile app. Yeah, or you can do it on, the, on their website. There's a, an alert section that you can go to. I think it's probably in your settings. I used so. to have on my credit card where you're supposed to sign the back. Yes. I would say ask for photo ID. Yeah, yeah. I always put CID on it. No one ever does. No, no, not anymore. No. Especially with COVID, they don't want to touch no. your card. They exactly. don't want to look at you. No. Nope. So those are some tips and tricks for you. I mean, there's there's more to this, I'm sure, and there's more areas where you can call to report things like this, but these are the big things. And if you want to get deeper into that, into it, we can certainly discuss it. Um, so. At least to make you aware. Yes. So yeah. now you know you put a little indication in your, you know. So now be a little skeptical of certain things. Um, yes, I'll be. Oh, yesterday I had a client send me um, photos. So he had professional photos done. It was a professional article done by you know all pros. So he sent me. He said, "Can you?" Um, can you download these pictures for me? So as soon as I, I brought them in, I went to download them. My computer was like, don't download this. You know, my security software was all going off. And and I said, I knew that this was a trusted thing. So I, I said, disregard. And I went for it. And it was nothing. Yeah, sometimes the software so, computer. Yeah. So sometimes the software is a little <coughs> sensitive more sensitive uh, you know and uh, and like I said so I had to make I had to make the decision so I said that this was a professional person professional photographer you know I'm saying there's no way that this can be you know something that's it I mean when in doubt run your antivirus software do a scan go to your settings look for your trust or your um your antivirus and do a scan and it will find anything that may be uh suspicious so um and always have that running so you can set up your computer to to just automatically run scans every so often very important to just have it do that because if something does come up 
you, you'll it'll tell you. So, um, any questions? So sometimes when the phone rings, it's a number that does look familiar. Yep. But it's not that person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So apparently, uh, um, these days scammers can steal phone numbers for a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they they I, I think they use some kind of program, and they can take regular people's phone numbers and make calls with them. And it's funny because I got a call from this number and I called it back because I was curious because it looked like a Rhode Island number. And the person was like, I never called you. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I bought a printer recently. Mm -hmm. And on the box it says one year, one year of ink included in box, right? Yep. And they're all sample packages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no one year of ink in it. No, there's nothing. Hmm. So, Mary Abby, another thing I experienced a while ago, a while back on my okay. iPhone, every so often I would get an alert that said my phone was compromised virus wise, call such and such. Yeah, that no. too is a scam. Yeah, you know? uh, or, 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 this um, was, yeah, this, this is Apple. You, uh, this is Apple. It comes across my telephone. This is Apple. Your your cell phone has been, you know, uh, compromised virus wise. Uh, please call this number. Yeah, I, I just shut that right down. You know, you know yeah. that's a scam. Apple doesn't really yeah. get virus alerts like that. Usually, if you visit a website, you'll get those messages. Um, so. Yeah, okay. yeah, Abby, this is Don. Done. Yes, I've had a problem. They called me up and said somebody was trying to get some money from me, and we want to catch them. Where the police type people, you know, security, and uh, they wanted me to give them a credit card, you know, a, a gift card, at a at a high amount, so that they could use that as bait to catch the person who's supposed to be taking my money. And of course, they're the ones taking my money. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what's up with these people in iTunes gift cards. I mean, they're, they're yes. like, oh. <laughs> well, because they can cash them in, I think. But it's so silly. I mean, ask for at least a Visa gift card. Like, I don't know. They <laughs> make it more realistic. Exactly. Um, Tracy, you have a question? Yeah. Um, I got a text from a number that I did not recognize. Mm -hmm. And because of my mom, I often get contacted by medical people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes for the first time, you know, visiting nurses always change. But I didn't respond because the message was only uh, hello Tracy with a question mark. Mm -hmm. And I didn't respond. And I mentioned it to one of my sons. I said, but what if it's the new visiting nurse? What if you know I'm always afraid to I not respond? Then yeah, she'll call you. Well, uh, not always. I have a visiting nurse who only texts. Uh, okay. But I asked my son, is there a way to go on my computer and look up a phone number and see what name is associated with it? It's like a reverse lookup. And he said no. Is that true? There is a way. It won't always find them. Yeah, they'll try to. Um, but there is a way. It's almost creepy. Like that, you can like that the information that they have when you do look a number of exactly. Um, and yeah, so there there is a way, Tracy. Um, I think sometimes it's usually yeah, it's usually a fee. So if you type the number in, yeah. they'll give you a couple of things. It's like a bait and switch thing, and they'll try to they'll try to suck you in. Well, you know, yeah, pay five ninety nine, and then they'll say, oh well, we can only give you these records. Pay another five nine. So guys, there's just this one that's really important. Um, I got a text. Well, someone else I know got a text and it said, "Hey, this is hey Greg, this is Mandy. You know, I'm so glad we met the other day, and like I'm back in town. Do you want to hang out? Um, blah blah blah." And so he was like, uh, "I think you got the wrong number because that sounds totally legit. Oh, you somebody just gave you the wrong number. You know, like you got the wrong person." Um, oh, that's so sad. Like, wow, that's so rude that he gave me the wrong number. I was like really excited to talk to him again. And it sounds legitimate. It sounds like someone just got the wrong number, and. Um, Thank God I don't hear that. And though. so and so she and so he was like, "Oh, I'm sorry that happened to you." And the the, the Mandy person was like, "Oh, no problem. Like, but you know, I'm I am around. Like, if you want to hang out." Like, <laughs> and uh, he was like, um, "Oh, I don't know." But she was like, "Well, here's a picture, so you can see that I'm a real person." And he she sent the picture, and it was, it was a, a lady. 
and he was like, and she was like, can you send me one so I can see what you look like? And he was like, um, I don't know about that. So I Googled the message. I put the, I copied the, me the first message that she had sent and I pasted it to Google. And it turns out that it was a trafficking attack. Oh no. And it was a common cam. So they would try to get you to meet them. Wow. It was creepy. It was really, really creepy. And th that same exact message had been circulated to many, many people before in, in the same, same exact language, in the same way. So Google the message. Somebody else, else was like, hey, um, we just got hit by the hurricane or whatever the disaster, natural disaster was. Um, can you forward the email that you get when to this email address when you get it? I why, would I, why would I have your email? Why would I, <laughs> I have people who send me pictures and uh, I, I'll go to uh, reverse lookup mm -hmm. and put their picture in, yep. and it turns out it's a, an actor or something. Yes. Yeah, you know, we're, not, we're not familiar with it. Yes, you can reverse look up pictures that you may get too. I didn't know that. Yes. I, I have a suggestion for Tracy. Um, my mother was a CNA. My idea for Tracy is um, contact the office, you know, where the CNA comes from, and put it in your mother's medical file. Make like a code, you know, five, six, nine. So anytime a CNA wants to communicate with Tracy by text, Whoa, she can put the message plus five, six, nine at the end of the text. That way you know it's coming from a real person. Awesome idea. Thank you, Richard. I love that. That's a really good idea. And, 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 and if you always get suspicious, you can always call the office and say, I want to change this code. And, and the CNA always has you, whether whether you have different CNAs with your mother, um, like my mother went to different patients, they, they, they always have the client file with them. So, you know, they, they can see the password and if they have to communicate with you, they'll put the three digit or whatever you put for a password at the end of the sentence. That way, you know, it's real. Thank you. That's, That's an awesome idea. Thank you, Richard. Awesome. Thanks, Richard. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, there we go. That's that's what we got for scams. But if you have any other tips, well, I received a letter from Bank of America. Mm -hmm. It was a, a statement on a credit card mm -hmm. for my mother. Now she's ninety six and a half. Been in assisted living a couple of years, and it was one charge on it nine dollars ninety five cents for Spotify. Mm -hmm. and now. Mom that is in the system of she doesn't charge anything and she wouldn't know what Spotify <laughs> from anything. So I went to Centerville Bank on on Roof Tree in Warwick and they said we can't discuss this with you because my name is not on the card. So I had to come back with college attorney mm -hmm. and we had to do all of that kind of thing. And oh man. Took, Six weeks to resolve a nine dollar ninety five cent. Come on! Wow. Yes. Um, anyway, it was going to start resolved. I said I've been handling this stuff for a couple of years. I've never seen a statement from Bank of America. We don't do business with them. Right. Turns out she did have a card that um, had been dormant right. for five years, and they had not canceled it for lack of activity, which surprised me. Hmm. So anyway, it took me six weeks to be able to close that account, and I never did pay the nine dollars ninety-five cents. <laughs> but the, the person at the bank said, "Are you sure she didn't do it?" I said, well, so "Spotify? No. Why? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was just absurd." Yeah, that's a hands down no. Exactly. <laughs> no. Exactly. No. 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 Awesome. Yeah. The other one I've gotten is a text. From Citizens Bank, we finished the review, or we've completed the review on your property, and they give my address. Um, and please call, we can give you a better uh, well, mortgage. Rate. Yeah. Well, it's a bank I don't do business with, mm -hmm. and I don't have a mortgage. Right. right. So I went to Citizens, and they said just ignore it. They weren't interested in following up yeah. either. Because I have too many of them. Well, that's what they said, and yeah. they said just. Just ignore it. So I, I never found anybody who's terribly interested in trying to stop. I know. I know. They won't do anything. This is Terrence and Ruth Chapman. We rarely answer our phone, but sometimes we used to get those calls about the car warranty. And I've oh. never been able to figure out what the scam is about that. This one, right here. So 
because you were talking about a new device for reading the dollar bills because I saw it on the um, Seeing AI app. That's what I yeah, use. The Seeing AI app can do it, but there's a separate device that the um, that the federal government gives the, for yeah, free. The federal government can give you. For real? Yeah, so for people that don't have a, a smartphone where they could use Seeing AI, um, the, federal, the, the United States government gives them something called iBill. It's a small device. Uh, and okay. it reads money. You slide the dollar bill in and it tells you what it is. Oh, it's that's made, good. It's made for the blind and for the deaf. And that's the phone oh, number for water at um, uh, Talking Book, who uh, will uh, put the application in for, your, for the bill. So this take this telephone number down if you're interested in the bill. Go ahead, Bob. 401 574 And her name is Alicia Water. She's with Talking Books out of Providence. Oh, she's wonderful. She is wonderful. Yeah. She take care of you. Mm -hmm. Glo Gloria? Yes, Richard. Oh, I already got Okay, that. I, I, I sent both Gloria and Mary Abby this morning a copy of iPhone Life. I don't know if you guys subscribe to that in the email box, but yeah. I, I, I just opened it this morning. Two things ring a bell to me. iOS 16, a peek into it. I don't know if you've heard of it yet. And also another caption in this uh, email says um, a patch for uh, battery drainage with the iOS 15. Have you heard of that? How, how to fix the battery drainage on the iOS 15. Have you oh, heard that problem? Issues, but no. there is a, um, there's an iOS... 15.23 update and a um, lot of people yeah. some people need to be cautious if you're not if you're on ios 15.2 and you're not having any issues um then you're fine but some people on ios 15.2 have have just reported that with voiceover when they type every letter is preceded with the word underscore which is kind of weird so if you're on 15.2 and you're fine that's okay you're good to go but if you're okay. not on yeah, just and I know we're on 15.3, but some people said that that's happening on 15.2. Yeah, 
Well, what one's the one's and, the thirteen point three? I think it's it already came out. out. Yeah, it just came it out. Just came out. Ooh. It's a small one. They just are you familiar with the um they have the patches of security thing with Safari, um so that's all that fifteen point three was. I have I know, a I know some. Um, uh, sorry. Hold on, we got Angie and Richard. Go ahead, Mary. Um, so I know that some people I, have I, been to a um a discovery session yet. So I just want to explain what it is a little bit because we just transitioned over to it. So it's kind of a weird. Uh, transition because <laughs> normally it's a separate session um so the the discovery session the assistive technology discovery session is just a place for us to talk about technology and ask questions um and it, it doesn't have to be about phones it can be about any kind of technology so if anyone um didn't know what that was i just wanted to make sure you were okay with that because we didn't we didn't switch over from the workshop all right so i have <laughs> Angie Richard. who's going first and ladies first oh. thank you <laughs> Um, anybody knows in iOS 15 with iPhone 12 and up, voiceover ducks your notification sounds. I reported this bug to Apple and I, before I did, I did experiments. Um, so I turned off voiceover and my notification sounds came in well. My texts, my other notification sounds. And uh, so then I turned on voiceover, they were duck. You can hear them, but they're very low. So there's the 15, I'm still on 15.2. Does anybody know 15.3 fix that? No one said anything about it being a bug fix, but, um, and you did, I'm, I'm assuming, because you're very good at this, I'm assuming that you did go to check your volume in your sound. Yes, everything, okay. yes. All right, then yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you could try the update and see if it fixes it, but I haven't seen any um, bug fixes for that particular issue. And what about 16? What does that say about? And Richard, what do you call that thing? iPhone Life? Yes, it's a, it's a, uh, Susan gave it to me. It's an, uh, I, I can send you the uh, thing to subscribe, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a daily thing. You'll send you tips about iPhone. You know, it's called iPhone Life in your email box. It send you daily tips, cool. or whatever. You know. Well, would like that. Thank you. Yeah. Um. What, what What do you think the sixteen might have? Do you have any idea? I have no clue. I don't know anything about it. No. no. We haven't even looked. Okay. Um, One of the and, and also, oh. I'm sorry. When is 16 supposed to come out? Because 15 came out in September. They said uh, June. 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 They said, yeah. Whoa. Wow. Oh, the beta. Probably the beta. The beta. Maybe the beta. Because that's really soon. On that iPhone Life, they sent uh, an email and it said rumors about iOS 16. You know, what it could do. I don't I'm even sorry. listen to rumors. Yep. Give me the hard facts. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like want to know that. what it can do, you know. But uh, an iPhone Life tip of the day is free. It's they send you a tip ver, uh, about either an iPhone, an iPad, or a Mac. It has to do with those three things, and it'll tell you uh, a, a quick tip about it, of, of what you can do, or a new function. Yeah. So it's a, it's a great, but you can subscribe to something further, which is like knowing your I-15. I hate having to go yeah. new direction. But the tip of the day, I recommend as well. In fact, I got that from you. You mentioned it yeah. one day. And I oh, went, well, yeah. And I went right to it and I go, this is helpful for some things you may find, you know, something to do like, I, I don't know, like how to send an email better or something, but it's quick. Well, I, I got to pass on the actual credit goes to Susan Kinzer. She, she gave it to me first. Okay. 